Welcome, my peeps, my peoples. Please like, comment, subscribe, share the video. It'll be greatly appreciated from the bottom of my heart. My peeps, my peoples, what's popping? What's cracking, lacking? Peace squad is in the building. For real, for real, we're going all the way to the top, baby, to the top, baby. We're going to bring others with us. Let's do this. What's cracking? Married to medicine. It wasn't really crack lacking on the show at all. It was kind of like dim, but it is what it is. But, you know... Imani, you know you was wrong for making that. Now it's a joke. It seemed like you was very serious at that dinner table when you was telling Shanique about, you know, um, Jazzy's husband living in a drug dealer house and all this other stuff. It, it reminds me of Tony Montana basically alluding. That shit was wrong and you kept and you brung it up again. Like you was on that. And I don't know what's going on with you and Jazz. I don't know if you don't like her. You feel like she's entitled, that she slept her way to the top. She used her legs to get it cracking. And she caught a man. She caught a big whale, a big fish. I don't know what it is, but you said if her greatest accomplishment in life is having a baby, you don't already did that. And you said when you was her age, you had three degrees. So it seems like you got a little animosity towards her. Like you think that she she fits that stereotype, you know, baby mama, no career, no nothing, with a man that got nothing but money, and then he's a drug dealer. Like, how you said, like, when the season started that, you know, I'm so ashamed that there's not a lot of black doctors in L.A., but yet one black psychiatrist that's a doctor, you think that he might be out here hustling and slanging at the same damn time. He might be slanging the medication, writing prescriptions, because we know the prescription game you know is out out there people want that oxycodone they want that percocet you know what i'm saying so i don't know but you really threw that out there and you didn't even know how that long to say some shit like that then you said it like on camera too as well if it was a joke you should have went home and joked with your husband about it but you got you got yourself a little storyline a little beef going on so you get in the pop and so you know what to do you ain't a psychiatrist for no reason but it seems like these psychiatrists be wiling out greg from married to medicine Gregory from Met Married to Medicine, you know, Atlanta, you know, he was out here wiling on stage and he had a lot of demons going on. You psychiatrists be out here wiling on TV. When you get them Bravo checks, you just be letting it loose. So we start off back at the party. And so basically you still got Shani. She's over here saying that Asha husband was out here cheating. He was with another woman four years ago and that overlapped. And he was in, when you was engaged to him or he was engaged to her, he was dealing with this other female and all, the whole nine yards and basically saying that he, her husband, while he was with with her engaged he was out here chilling with the girl from medical school and basically she threw it out there like it would like it wouldn't hurt her or whatever she was very mild malice she had a lot of malice with it it was like yo she did that for show and she definitely did disrespect her like yo come on like that shit's crazy like you you doing it on national tv you could destroy a marriage what if Asha was the type that wanted to break up with her husband or basically her life fell apart and her and her husband started beefing? Like, you tried to cause division right on national TV. I think that's wrong of you, but I see where you're coming from, Shanique, because, you know, you got Asha over here acting like she didn't know the other woman was going to be there. Like, come on, miss me with that shit. She knew that she was the possibility that she was going to be there and you talked to her on the phone, so she knew she showed up for the camera. She wanted to be there. You know, you had Dr. Heavenly there, so she wanted to be there, but she's acting is she acting Asha like I want to say that you're not acting but she told you and it's like damn you just going all overboard like you want everybody to defend you defend yourself get in get in Shanique's ass like fuck your apology I don't need you to apologize to me you wrong you dead up wrong and I don't need Britney I don't need Imani I don't need Jazzy I don't need you know Noel to say whatever I'll say what I want to say you fool gazy you fake you know why is she crying and like defend yourself you know you you know Come on, act tough, act tough, you know, start putting your acting skills together and start acting tough, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's really going on? So we got that situation, but um, Shanique was definitely wrong for bringing up that part. But uh, she could have just said, you know, she was going to come there or not. You knew that she is a possibility that she was going to be there and invited because she graduated med school with my husband. So, like, you shouldn't, there's a possibility that she was going to be there. So, Asha, it was up to you to show up or not but then Asha said that oh listen I knew there was a possibility but I didn't know I was going to be like put on a put on front street um you don't watch reality tv you don't see what be going on out here in these streets so anyways we have that situation so 
Um, Shanice could have just left it at, I told you. She didn't have to say, oh, you really, you really trying to hide what's really going on. She acts like she don't know. She said, you know, she said her husband, Larry, hasn't told her anything. He don't talk about his exes. He only talk about her. Okay, good for you because he don't want you finding out and investigating and doing a time search or knowing who the person is so you can do your own research so he keeps it to a bare minimum so you don't know much and if you do hear a little bit you can't put it together so that's what it seems like with asha or whatever so it is what it is i was just like mm, mm, mm. we get messy so then we move on to you know um Asha, Asha's on the phone. She's calling her husband like, you won't believe what just happened to me. You know, Shanique just exposed me, saying that she was cheating on me. Blase in the third, I can't believe this. But she still, she didn't leave the scene. She didn't exit. She didn't bounce. You know, she ain't too hurt. So, you know, um, Imani comes over there and be like, come on, come back and join the group. And Asha was like, only if she apologized. Her apology don't mean shit, really? Come on. Only if she apologized. So she got her apology. And so now she's sitting back at the table with the big girls or whatever, and basically, you know, she got her apology, she's like, oh, your apology really ain't all that, like, why would you say that, like, that's wrong, whatever, so, but, you know, um, Shanique, she apologized, but she was about to not, she was about to blame Asha, Asha, whatever her name is, Asha, for the situation, and basically pointed at her, like, you knew that she was coming, and Blas ain't the third, and you acting, but then she cut it off, she switched it up, she was like, I'm just sorry, she just left it as that, and then Asha was like, you know, I need people to defend me, I need people to help me, Blas ain't the third, then we got Imani going around, asking people, what's going on, how you feeling, um, you want to respond to what Shanique said, and so Asha was like, nah, I don't got nothing to say. And then it was like, you know, Imani was like, um, Brittany, do, Britt, do you want to respond? And she was like, yeah, I think it's kind of wrong, you know, um, or whatever. And basically, you know, let's talk about this situation with like the, the house and how, how you, how Jasmine house look or whatever. And, you know, I think it was just like a little bit of sinuation, but she couldn't really get it all clear. She couldn't really get it all out because Jazzy stopped the dead in her tracks and Jazzy was like, yo, listen, let's move on to the next one. Let's move on to Imani. You're talking about my husband. You're talking about he looks like a drug a drug dealer house and all this other stuff. Like, why why are you acting like that? Why are you saying that about me? Imani was like, yo, listen, I went to parties. I went to this place. I went to that place back in the day, back in the 80s, and they were all drug dealers and, you know, the house resembles it. Blase ain't the third. And so she was like oh just because and then you know Imani was like well I'm a psychiatrist I don't make that type of money and blah in the third I don't do this and I don't do that so how can he do this and basically counting his cheddar his corn what he got in his house and basically thumbing her nose down to her like yo your husband's a drug dealer that's how you got it but yeah he's a psychiatrist just like she is so anyways you know, Jazzy was like, no, I just because my husband's up here and he's making this type of money and you ain't making that type of money or whatever, don't even try to come at me like that. You're a hater. Then Imani was like, what? Oh, no, you did not say that. I never want anything you have. I never want anything you, you desire. I never want to be like you. I ain't jealous of you. And I swear I'm getting mad. I'm getting upset. She's closing her eyes. And she's just saying, like, I never want anything you have. I never want any of your accomplishment. I never want nothing you got. I'm not inferior. I'm not jealous and for you to try to put me down is wrong like she took it all the way around she's supposed to be mediating this shit she's supposed to be the psychiatrist she's supposed to have the even tone the even kill she's supposed to have like the calmness or whatever but she's getting all radic you got Brit talking about oh my god I just don't I hope you know Jazzy don't leave here you know with a bald head like Imani or whatever because you know but Jazzy's not backing down and Imani's doing way too much like she took it way too much but you know um Jazzy was like, you a hater. And she was like, yo, she's defending her husband. She's defending what she has because they can mess up his reputation. People can start doing investigation, make him look bad. People don't want to be bothered with him or whatever. But for her to just assume that he's a drug dealer and, it's just, and then he's a black doctor, it's just crazy that she went there. But she went all the way there and Jazzy was with the shit. She wasn't scared. She wasn't afraid. Money, you could, you know... Imani probably would have whooped her ass or whatever, but Jazzy works out, so I don't know if she can fight or whatever, but Imani's closing the eyes. She look all crazy. She's put, she's doing every negative stereotype of a black woman, and she's possessing it right here. Like, I'm going to hold myself together. Oh, all that extra. It seemed like, you know, um, you and Asha got a lot in common because you both are great actors, but she was upset. I guess she's trying to con 
calm herself, control herself. So this is the way she calms herself like this. It's like, okay, I'm what's going on? And what's up with Asha drinking? And, you know, I thought Asha was trying to have a baby and shit like that. And she's kind of like over the hill and she's drinking. Like, what's going on? Shit. So Imani's just on her knees talking about all this or whatever. While she's down there doing all that, if Jazzy was about it, Jazzy would have kicked her in the head or something. Jazzy could have really attacked her because she had her guards down, whatever. But, you know, Imani looks like a, you know, she looked like she could be in a video game warrior, you know, type of princess warrior. Imani, you know, with a sword, the outfit on, and she's in shape. She runs all the time, so that shit wasn't going to happen. But Imani, you did way too much. You know you was wrong. You started with that girl first. That girl invited you to our house to chill, to have a good time. You guys had great conversation, and you and talking about colorism. And then the next day, you meet up with her, her girl and talk about, you know, let's talk about the Bentleys, counting all their money, and just being very judgmental. You know what I mean? Sometimes you judge a situation, but sometimes you can keep your judgments and your thoughts to yourself, especially if they're inappropriate and especially if if they're not they don't have any foundation but now you're saying it was a joke you totally lied to your mother you was definitely serious and so now we got the situation with noelle her daughter's going to a most likely majority school of caucasian she doesn't fit in and she's feeling a certain type of way she and the daughter you know went home early from school noelle had to pick her up and it's just sad because her daughter just just doesn't feel comfortable or whatever but you know they're trying to get her through it because she has to face the real world one day and she might not she might be rejected she might get treated badly because of the color of her skin so i guess it's appropriate for her to learn now than later but you know kids only have one childhood and childhood really kind of defies or really you know when kids have problems when they become adults you know they go back to their childhood so if you can put her in a nice school that have more people that look like her and if not get you know get some extra short curriculum activities you know get a tutor get some you know other stuff going on too as well or basically go up to the school and see what the um curriculum is like and see what you can do to help and and be a part of the community that that your, your daughter could be going to school at and actually you know, invest in, you know, being there and supporting and try to raise money or try to make the school system better because you got the clout, you got some of the money and you can bring awareness to if their academics and their curriculum at the other school that have more minorities could actually better increase. You know, you could do a lot, but I guess it's more easier do putting your daughter in this school um, that she totally feels uncomfortable and and she's probably going to have some regrets about this when she gets older, but it might make her a better person. So it's a gamble. It's a 50-50 gamble or whatever. But would you guys put your child in a uh, predominant Caucasian school and then the, your child is letting you know that they feel very uncomfortable and unwanted? But they didn't say all that. But, the, the, but you know, the daughter was like, she's ready for it. She's about it. I think she really feels like she don't belong. That's why we, it's time to have that ADOS reparations and build our schools, baby. And then we got none other than Asha. She meets with her husband. She's making a him a dish. She's looking all sexy. She ain't mad. She ain't upset. And she's doing what she's supposed to do. I'm so glad that Asha didn't yell at her husband, get mad at her husband, let somebody bring drama in her life, and it affects her marriage. No, she's in the jacuzzi. She's drinking. Was she supposed to be having a baby? Do he's supposed to be in the jacuzzi with his balls getting all heated up? I don't know. But anyways, I, I thought she was working on getting pregnant, but she's been drinking in the last two scenes or whatever, you know, and whatever. So, basically, she talks to her husband about the situation, and um, it is what it is. And she lets him know that it was just so shady what Shanique did, and basically that he cheated on her, and the relationship overlaps with the other lady. He really didn't address it. They act like it was no big deal, and basically, you know... Um, Asha just basically said he never talked about his ex. I've been the only one. he And he's the only man that I've ever been with that didn't bring up his ex. You know, but it doesn't seem like Larry's all the way in it. You know what I mean? You know, out of all this time, he didn't want to impregnate her while she was more fertile. Um, Doesn't really seem to be into, you know, like... He did go to a doctor's appointment with Asha to see, you know, what they can do 
for them to increase their chances of her conceiving a child. But he doesn't really seem like he's in it. He's worried about the money and the cost. And everybody's saying he got enough money to do it. <laughs> so it is what it is. Oh, and let's get back to let's get back to the other scene. I almost skipped over this shit. So when we're over here at this scene, so basically everybody's throwing shade. And so Asha basically was just like, you know what, listen. Asha was like, um, <laughs> excuse me. Asha was like, what did Asha say? Asha was like, what school did you go to, you know, Jazzy? What school did you go to, Jazzy? <laughs> Where is it at? She said, what school did you go to? And then when she said that, and then Jazzy was like, well, I went to such and such school. And then, um, and so then, you know, the other ladies named what school they went to. And so then, you know, Jazzy was like, what school did you go to, Imani? Imani was like, I went to this school. And then Asha was like, well, you know what? I teach, you know, kind of like a professor. Maybe I can go back and teach or whatever. And then, you know, um, what is her name? Jazzy was like, well, I would never go. I would never go to your school. I'd never go to your classes because you're regular, you know, zero actor you know zero academics like you're not a good actor and like you're on a low um totem pole of acting and so how can you teach anybody basically about acting when your 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 level would be a hundred i was just like your curriculum level would be a hundred i was just like yo that is so shady she went in on her and i know she wish she never said nothing about the situation so we have these two. So it is what it is. Larry ain't copying to nothing. Asha act like it don't matter. And then we have Imani. She's home with her man, her husband. And basically she's, and then also Jazzy's like, your husband had a, hasn't had a hit since the 90s. So yeah, her husband was in the music group and you know, they broke up and they ain't did no music since. And we're going to talk about that another day. And so, you know, um, Imani is here with her husband or whatever, and she's telling him, oh, they had a TV in the bathroom. And, you know, um, her husband, Larry, her, her husband's not Larry, whatever her husband's name is, I don't know. He was just like, oh, that sounds pretty cool. And basically, he was telling Imani that I think, like, you don't understand how she could be hurt and how she can take offense to what you said and accusing her, her husband of being a drug dealer. Like, like, you came at her wrong and negative, basically insinuating that, you know, husband is a drug dealer because he lives like tony montana he got like four bentley's a long driveway and all this other stuff and she's not getting it's not clicking in her head she thinks she did nothing wrong she's absolutely correct but she says it's over so she's one of them type of people that don't think that she her shit don't stink and she don't do nothing wrong and that's crazy because you're supposed to be more open-minded but it is what it is you know but it's all for tv and so then we have now none other than you know brett and she's chilling with you know shanique and shanique has a real estate license in California and she runs like high managed property over there and downtown you know making that cheddar and she's a mother and a wife and she take care of her kids so you know she's like so only person that's really just chilling and sitting back is Jazzy and aka Asha a little bit but they all been to college baby so we have that situation. So Brett, she's basically trying to find a house because she needs to find the house because her husband is like, it's an ultimatum. And he was like, if you don't find a house in such and such time, you know what? You're going to have to move your ass back down to Florida. They showed the mansion of Florida, huge ass mansion, big ass house. They can't afford that type of real estate property. It's on three acres. This house is a half an acre that she's looking at. The house looks old. Um, It's not her cup of tea. She don't want up a baby. I would take that house all day, every day. I bet most of the people that are viewing this video would take that house that she don't want because it's old school like oh no but I, anybody would take that house you know you have to do some work to it but it was kind of like outdated or whatever but she can update it but i can understand for her level she wouldn't want that type of house too much work and her husband was not going to feel it look what the house that they're coming from it, it wasn't the feel that it would be for her and then plus it's all the way out there in the boonies this is in the boondocks baby so it is what it is with that situation so they're holding it down. The ladies are holding it down like it ain't nobody's business. And then we got Shanique. She meets up with Jazzy. And they're having a conversation. We find out that Jazzy is a freak about gaining weight. She's into her health. And taking care of the kids and the husband is just too much. You got to get a nanny. She's trying to work out, eat avocado. But they were saying the avocado, like, on the skin of the avocado is some damage to it where it's kind of like poison that can cause some type of skin disease or some type of 
disease or whatever. So stay away from the avocados from now on. They said they're from California too. So we have that situation. And, you know, um, we have, you know, Shanique, she's talking about like, I, I do this, I do that, I do everything. Like, you know, I'm Mother Teresa over here. I'm Mary Poppins over here, baby. And so it is what it is with that situation. So it was just like, you no, know, basically, um, Shanique was like, damn, you don't really do shit. Your biggest nightmare is, you know, did you eat enough eggs or avocado? You work out all the time. You got that snap back. You eat correct. And Shanique was like, I can't do it. I'm going to have my curves, baby. So we find out that Jazzy is really focusing on her looks and trying to make sure she stay beautiful so she can keep all them benzes, them benzes, <laughs> them ben <laughs> the Bentleys, and she can keep that big-ass house. <clears throat> She ain't trying to be swept out. She ain't trying to. She's trying to stay classy. She's trying to. She's trying to stay jazzed up, baby. So it is what it is. I was just like, oh no. And so then we get, you know, um, Brett. Basically, she goes on an uh, interview, and this woman that's interviewing her is the owner of the place. It's all women that work there. She wants to work there to be an anesthesiologist. And she wants to be there. She wants to work there, whatever. She likes to play. She talked about her military experience, how she can work under pressure. And she took care of the enemy, too, as well. So, to me, I think she's a shoe in for the job. How can you not hire her? So, you see why you see why um, she, she's really skilled at what she's doing. She's really, really skilled. And you can see why she's friends with um, Contessa. So moving on from that, then we move on to Imani getting a tattoo. Imani don't think anything that she did is shady. She just like she'll get a tattoo. Like she has adrenaline that you know she pumps a lot. Like she she acts erratically a little bit because she's always straightforward. Her she talked about her childhood being straight, being this and that. So she just wanted to get a tattoo. And plus it was something to do with the film. Basically she don't think that she did anything wrong and she didn't say nothing wrong and she was just joking and it wasn't serious. I was like yeah miss me. With that bullshit. You're faking a funk all day, baby. And I like Imani. Imani's cool. And then we got Noel. Noel seems like she's been through some shit. I don't know if we're ever gonna find out, but she seems like she's been through a lot. She seems like she's a survivor of abuse and neglect and all types of shit. Like she's been through some shit. And um she will pop off in a heartbeat, but she reads the Bible and her self-help books and she tries to, you know, make sure she runs a practice, meditate, and she does yoga and all this other stuff. She's doing the right thing. And basically, she just met her husband two years ago. He came to her house around Christmas time. She was trying to clean out her tree. He took the tree down and he vacuumed because he wanted a place to stay. He's only an administrator. You own all types of businesses. You got your own shit and you're a doctor. He was like, I love this woman. She's the greatest, baby. And she loves him too and he's there for her. And she was like a little child the little kid opened up to him like yo i had a really hard, hard week and he was like oh for real and she was both well, yeah so that was so i thought that was a cute moment how she just felt safe and comfort and loved by him and was able to open up to him but you know they be acting asha work on that baby but asha yo you knew that the ex was gonna be there you really had us fool i really thought shanique was like shady real shady but she was shady bringing up your husband cheating because she could have destroyed a whole lot so, we have that situation, and, and it's all good, and it's going to work out for them. And then we have Imani. She meets up with her mother. They look just alike, and basically, she tells her mother the situation with, you know, Jazzy about the drug dealer, the Bentley, and, and she was only joking, blase in the third. And her mother was like, you wrong. You're accusing a black doctor. Why would you think that about a black doctor? Like, you know, you are putting in every stereotype. The mom was like, you were dead up wrong. But she, Imani still didn't own up to it. She was like, well, I apologize to her. Say, if I made you feel uncomfortable because I said the house looks like this because blah, blah, blah. And then move forward. But no, she's not really accepting that, you know, if my joke, if the joke that I said. I was like, come on. You did way more than I. You was mad shady for that, though. Real shady. And then you, you're going to cause a problem when, you, when you're meeting the husband. When you meet Jazzy's husband, if you guys do meet him because no one has met him. And then it's going to be an awkward situation. So peace him out. One love to all my peeps and my peoples. Please like, comment, subscribe, share the video. It'll be greatly appreciated. Peep Squad is in the building, baby.